Live from somewhere, it's DJ Bonix on Go 95.3. Live from somewhere, it is DJ Bonix, and we are currently in space with my very special guest from the revolution, <laughs> and of course, just an amazing drummer and person all around. <laughs> we got my guy Bobby Z. How are Sir? you? Welcome to space. Have you ever been yeah. to space before? I, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. revisiting space. Uh, perfect. Perfect. So, you know, I like to make sure you're comfortable when we do the interview so we can go anywhere, anytime, any okay. place to have the interview. Where would you like to have it? Uh, let's go to Paris. We'll go to Paris. All right, yeah. Paris. We got a one, yeah. two, three. Boom. And here we are here in we are. Paris. Ooh. Welcome to Paris. Yeah. It's a great choice right now. So this year uh, is the 10 year uh, of the Twin Cities Film Festival. That's right. And coincidentally, it's 35 years celebrating Purple Rain. How's that feel? Uh, unbelievable, right? Yeah. Um, I'm happy for the film festival. Ten years is, uh, is really remarkable to get all these great films. 35 for Purple Rain is really um, where the time go. Right. And it really uh, still blows my mind that that the music is so powerful. Can you still watch that movie, or uh, is it you kind of over it, or, or what? You know, when you catch it and you see it, you know, you can't, it, it, it's like one of those movies where you do have to stop. Right, right, you right. Just, right you just right. watch it because you know that Prince is in it, and, you know, his performance is riveting, and the music's riveting. Right. Uh, so it still catches you, right? Was Minneapolis as colorful like that in that time? Like in 19, was 84, 80? The, the, you know, I mean, this was what Prince saw Sam's or Uncle Sam's or First Avenue, right. the building was always uh, a, a place that was creative. Even in the early 70s, right. when it was the depot or the first time, uh, you had, you know, like original hippies going there. Right, that right. It was like right. the real deal. And right. you, you had, you know, and then there was, you know, Kane was a band that ruled the roots there for a while. Okay. And then, you know, um, you know, Prince and I would go there and kind of check it out. And it went through a red, white, and blue phase, you know, it was, a, you know, the disco era. Right, right. And then out of that, you know, Prince just kind of figured that he could create a, a world in there. And uh, so the town was always musically creative, even back from the 60s, uh, with my brother David and Prince's uh, first manager, Owen. These right. records were, were, it was kind of like a mecca with, the ground was laid for a musical messiah to come, right. and First Avenue was the Jerusalem, and he just kind of took it. It's know? crazy, and it's it's still great that they we still celebrate First Ave today. Yeah, and it's still rocking. Yeah, it's still uh, one of the greatest venues on in the world now, including when you, Paris. Including <laughs> yes, uh, so I, I was you know watching that film. I'm kind of like was Prince in real life how he was in that movie and was Morris Day in real life how that movie was or did they play it up a little bit? Oh, the, the, the characters they kind of created, the, the people were uh, colorful, funny, rambunctious, you know, Prince was, you know, even the, when he helped create or did create the right. time, he right. was into that kind of what we know as that Jamie Starr character, which was this kind of Morris Day alter ego, right. kind of, the, the wild man. <laughs> and Morris was uh, bought into that. So uh, I think there's a little bit of both. I think they had it in them, but uh, they kind of uh, play acting this, this kind of persona that was humorous right. yet kind of uh, entertaining at right. the same time. I, was, I mean, it's a great movie. And watching it now almost like you know, obviously 35 years later, like, there's definitely some scenes that I don't know they would do today, like throwing a girl in the dumpster and yeah. <laughs> other things like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was a different time. Right. Uh, but, but the story was about domestic violence. Right. And um, it was addressed uh, and uh, was part of the story. And there's a redemption at the end. And right. so hopefully, you know, that there was lessons learned and they went forward from that. Right. But, yeah, it's definitely... Uh, uh, a different time and place, but uh, it was a, a, a happy ending, right? So besides obviously playing at those great parties that it seemed like was filming it, um, you had a couple lines in the movie. Oh, yeah. Do you remember your lines? I know I, you had two lines, right, if I remember correctly. Well, I believe I had it. The, the big one, which was, what difference does it make? We're still a group, right? Yeah, yeah. What wait, can we get it? Can we get it like, like it was a what film? What difference does it make? Man, we're still a group, right? There it is. There uh, it is. But you have to listen when I, the, <laughs> the, the, the chair noise when I, when I did it. This was like the day before. It was like December 23rd, and 
the crew from Hollywood was ready to go home for Christmas, and it was like one of the last things shot. Right. So when I did the line, I get up and I push the chair back, and you know I kind of cringe when it because I mean the chair is louder than the line. Right. Right. You li when you listen to it. Okay. It's like. <laughs> Uh, the other line is, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. And then what he says, let's get him. Yeah, let's get him. So these are important moments in Hollywood, Oscar-worthy <laughs> performances. I mean, I had to bring them up. You yeah. know, I had to bring yeah, them I'm up. I'm glad you remember them. Uh, oh, no, they're definitely, they stuck <laughs> in my mind. I couldn't forget the wonderful performance. And uh, the, the little pencil stash, though, was that oh, yeah. real? Was that your real oh, pencil yeah. stash, or was yeah. that? No, yeah, Errol Flynn, you know, uh, 1920s, I was kind of the, you know, definitely looking for that silent movie star look. Right. Um, it was groomed over time. Of course, I been with Prince since day one and right. so we were digging through tatters used clothing store we were making those controversy suits and ties and trench coats we were finding you know we right. were creating these images that we felt comfortable with and uh, I you know the matinee idol was something that I that I took to and, and personified it and Prince encouraged me to do it so um, it was kind of a, a, a cool vibe that, that worked in a rainbow suit, so right. who would ever know that, you know. Man, you, pull, you pulled it off. All, all you guys did it real well. It's amazing. So I just moved to Minneapolis about two and a half years ago, so just kind of feeling that real Prince culture and seeing how he did impact it and, and obviously the revolution and, and Moore's Day and all that, man. I just want to say congratulations to you and yeah. to be a part of something so dynamic and you are really a piece of uh, music history, man. How's that feel, man? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's the words are very kind, and uh, I just have to say that uh, you know um, Prince was. I was just lucky, you know, to know uh, <clears throat> probably the greatest of all time, right. and um, became friends with him at a very early age, and was on a journey. And I'm very grateful he took me on this journey, and I'm really thrilled that mm. the world um, appreciates what we did you know it's uh, nothing nothing feels better as a musician and right. being in a band it's so difficult as everybody knows you're out there kind of Grinding. working it and trying to do it right. and to have that level um, with with a maestro like that um, right. feels feels historic and grateful and appreciative and the revolution always loves you and uh, we always love Prince, right? Oh, that's amazing. Now, for someone who, uh, you know, a millennial or someone younger who may have not really know Prince's legacy or even familiar with him, and uh, what would you tell them about Purple Rain or why maybe they, that's something they should check out? Well, I think they should start earlier than that, you know, go to the discography. Okay. You, you need to kind of listen to a couple key tracks. I would go to the first album and uh, I would listen to the diversity of how he could rock so hard right. on songs like you know Bambi and I'm Yours, and then you know like the opening track, the opening cut is for you, which right. shows this the ability to sing with himself like nobody ever has, right. the ability to, to 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 voice these choruses in in, in the studio by himself. Right. You move on to the second album, you see the songs like I Feel for You. He's 20 years old. Right. He wrote this song that became right. obviously Chaka. And, and crossed over into a early days of hip hop, you right. know, and and just think about that. Right. And then you know songs like "I Want to Be a Lover" and you know "Why You Want to Treat Me So Bad." He just had a real powerful thing getting into "Dirty Mind," right. you know, where he's starting to, to embrace the, the the punk rock of Europe. He was right. looking towards you know, oh look at that photo, and uh, <laughs> he you know he was you know looking to the world and you know controversy just the joke of everybody's talking about him and he writes right. a song about it right. 1999 he just took what was left of disco mm. just a little bit left mm -hmm. and in 1999 that song he says party that's right party and that just took what was left of disco but then he threw the rockers little red corvette right he started to build an audience purple rain then becomes a sacred song right it's his sacred prayer that everyone you know it's a down tempo song speaking of the film festival right i was talking to the film festival people think about it purple rain the climax of that movie is a down tempo song that makes you just stop right whenever you hear those chords of purple rain right you just stop 
and that's mm -hmm. his song that will get us uh, in the heart for the right. rest of our lives. It even changed the mind of uh, the, the club owner and the promoter at the end of the movie, he, you know? He shed a tear. Like I said, it was a happy ending. <laughs> a rough story, happy ending. Um, so we just actually celebrated, I believe, 40 years of his sophomore album, right? And on the That's 17th right. of October, they dropped the I Feel For You acoustic version. Right. You've heard that before the, it, the state released it, correct? I, not only that, I watched the, the recording of it go down in the valley. Wow. Um, <laughs> and it sounds like just hearing it, it's still sexy. It's still just so smooth. And uh, just hearing that rawness of uh, that re-release is just, or the release actually is just well, amazing. Well, that's the thing. The songwriting was just so pure and real. And, and you know, it, when you're writing songs, you know, it, it's a struggle for right. a lot of people. Uh, for Prince, it was, it, it could start with the bass. It could start with the drums. It could start with the guitar. And it could start with lyrics right and it, uh, that song was just something that he he just had in his gut right it right. just comes out in that demo and you just feel it i feel it. it's amazing uh last last but not least uh i was a huge fan growing up i, I grew up in philadelphia so i was a huge fan of the roots and quest love oh, okay. and i noticed when i was uh, at justin timberlake's little party whether you agreed with it or not at the Super Bowl time. Um, I got to see the Revolution play, and uh, you know, just hearing Questlove talk about like your relationship, uh, he has a relationship with you now. Oh, yeah. How, uh, tell me about that, and are you still, do you guys like make music together, or does he like, are you his big brother in that fame, or are yeah. you guys sharing, because you know, he's uh, a major Prince fan, so I'm my, sure he's my, trying to. My joke to Quest is, uh, you know, I'm glad you weren't around back then, because you know, I, I didn't have to compete with you You're right. the drummer chair. <laughs> he is quite the drummer, but right. uh, we we became super friends. Um, he, he really helped me out when I had some health issues. You right. know, he, he came and DJ just I'm coming. You know, right, right. and brought you know people in left and right. Uh, it's it just he's such an amazing guy. But um, one of the earliest emails I ever got, you know, was just him out of the blue. It was just like you know I appreciate what you did. You know, I mean he he understood what what happened. You know, with the struggle and the, and the challenge of making electronic electronic drums playable at the right. beginning he, he really understood and, and we just bonded and uh, I, I just I, I think he's uh, just an amazing human being and a obviously talent, a man. huge Prince fan and he you know he's 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 a you know he's a disciple you right, know of course we're apostles he's a disciple right so right. it's uh, he's definitely a beautiful man amazing uh, the 10th year of the Twin Cities Film Festival this year. And uh, on Wednesday, we are celebrating 35 years of Purple Rain. Bobby Z, thank you very much. Before we get out of here, I want you to take us to the place right now. We're going to high five our way there to the place that most makes you think of being with Prince. Can we do that? Uh, okay. Let's go. Uh, before they tear it down, let's go to the Capri Theater. We're going to the that? Capri North Theater. North Minneapolis. North Minneapolis. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. And we are here. Thank you for joining us live from somewhere. Bobby Z from the world famous revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you.